Welcome back to the show. Our next guests are a couple of the creative forces behind an exciting new documentary capturing the life of Ernie Coombs, better known and beloved by millions of Canadians as Mr. Dress Up. Take a look. I've got a good bat costume here to show you. Ernie never forgot a child within him, and that informs everything that he does with children. Hi, Mr. Dress Up. Hi. One of the reasons I became an actor was because very early age, this person on television, an adult but not an adult, taught me that it was okay to let my free flag fly. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the great Canadians. The film is called, yeah, stirring some feels. Uh, the film is called Mr. Dress Up, The Magic of Make Believe. So please welcome to the show, director Rob McCallum and a series regular on Mr. Dress Up, Allison Court. Welcome. Yeah. Okay, a little taste of nostalgia there. We all just got whipped back in time in the best way possible. And we know that so many Canadians grew up on this show. It was on air for 29 years. 4,000 episodes, which That's is amazing. That's where this comes from, originally. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. So Rob, tell us about your personal connection to the show and also how you ended up directing this film. I'm sure it's different from everybody else in Canada. I grew up watching it every day. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> it was a staple. I aged out into school, but that doesn't mean I forgot about it when I was homesick and not feeling well. Other than chicken noodle soup, Mr. Dress Up was the comfort food that made me feel better. Even well into my teenage years, Mr. Dress Up was always there. It was that, you know, that loving relationship with an adult, but all the time in the world. And he had the coolest friends over, Casey and Finnegan. And yeah, maybe if you look back, it's weird that they lived in a treehouse. But what kid <laughs> didn't want their own treehouse? Yes. To play with and hang out and do crafts and draw all day and dress up and... You know, the fact that there wasn't a dress up documentary meant somebody had to take it on eventually. And when I showed my kids Mr. Dress Up, you know, they watch a lot of the new stuff, which is really fast and exciting. Mr. Dress Up is of a different era. So I thought, is this gonna stick? Cause usually they don't like dad shows that, that much <laughs> cause it's when dad grew up and it's a little old, but they stuck to it. They were glued to Mr. Dress Up. They were hooked. They had to see how the story ended. What was gonna happen with that drawing? Where were those lines going? And how were those toilet paper tubes gonna connect with that newspaper tree? What was gonna happen? Oh, <laughs> they had that. to know. And yeah. so I thought, if this is working now for kids of today, there's some value in this, some real, like, yeah. honest to good value, and it has to get out there. And maybe we need that reminder of that inner child, that kindness, that community spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's what started the journey almost five years ago oh, to bring this film to life. Oh, labor of love, yeah. so great. Wow. Um, Allison, you had a, a role that many kids would have just loved to have had growing up in the 80s. You were a series regular. You hung out with Mr. Dress Up. You hung out with the Tickle Trunk, mm -hmm. which we have here today. Oh, My goodness. <laughs> Your memories of that time, what was that experience like for you and what made it special? I was already acting in other TV things, but this was different. And I remember when I first got booked on Mr. Dress Up, at first the reaction was like any other commercial or whatnot until the morning on set and he's there and we're doing our song rehearsal. And it was like meeting the real Santa Claus. Oh yeah. Like not a mall Santa Claus, not knocking <laughs> mall Santa Claus, they're, they're great, but the real Santa Claus because he was just warm, friendly, inviting. He knew the effect that he had on everybody. And so he would just be very gentle and he'd be like, hi, I'm Ernie, how are you? Not in your face, not aggressive, but not super saccharine, just lovely. And you knew that you were in the presence of someone who Maybe up until that moment, you hadn't realized what an impact they'd had on yeah. your life. Yeah. But it was, it spoke to something just so deep inside. And being a part of that for so many years was, it was gold. Like, I, I was so lucky. So cool. <laughs> Listen, we see some big names in this doc. Graham Greene, Bare Naked Ladies, Eric McCormack. We also saw a quick clip of Michael J. Fox as well. How did you get these big stars on board? And was it a hard sell? Uh, no, I mean, we basically said, hey, do you guys want to talk about uh, Mr. Dress Up? And they're like, yeah, I do. I want to talk about my, Mr. Dress Up. And that doesn't happen in this industry. Everybody's like, every excuse under the sun to say no, because why take the time if there's a risk? But Mr. Dress Up is the exception to the rule. And, you know, when you talk with these people, their accolades are great. They've done huge things. But it's like, oh, I'm just talking with Mikey on the playground. He loves the hat that he puts on. 
To you guys, it's Michael J. Fox, but when I'm talking about the thing that I love, it's just Mikey or, you know, Eddie is just, you know, just, it's, they're just people that you would hang around with school with and you share that language. Mr. Dress Up's a language, it's not just a show, it's an experience, a feeling, it's a whole vibe, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want to talk about Casey, who was one of the puppets uh, that everyone will remember. And I remember as a kid watching, and I didn't know if Casey was a boy or a girl, and I didn't even question it. was just Casey, right? And it turns out that that was actually intentional to create this gender ambiguous uh, you know, character. And I just think that that's so ahead of its time. Big time. Right, like, so what, what talk about how, uh, what, like, did it feel that way when you were sort of uncovering this? What did you find interesting about that? Well, we gotta talk about Judith Lawrence, who yes. was like probably a little bit of an unsung hero, right? Cause she was the performer of Casey and Finnegan and for years was underneath the counter. And Ernie's the face of the show, right? Mr. Dress Up, there he is. But, Who's the person performing Casey and Finnegan and what's her story? Yeah. So the film shows that and what we get to learn is she really wanted to transfer that agency to the children. So is Casey a boy? Is Casey a girl? It doesn't matter. What matters is that the child gets to figure that out and use that decision in the playtime. Yeah. And that's all Judith knew, that play was power. And the more kids felt the power, that transformation, the better. And to think about that, in the 60s, when it's mandated today to think about that with some big book that they give you, she just knew it was right then to do it. And yeah. I mean, I'm sure Allison saw that on set all the time, like these, these decisions that were just informed from the heart to make these decisions before it was mandated. Absolutely, and you brought up earlier about how many powerful women were involved yeah. in the making of that show. Just strong, strong, smart women that we didn't get to see in front of the camera. Yeah. Uh, but like Lily Barnes, I was so grateful to be able to see one of the writers at the uh, TIFF premiere for the movie. Yes. And Lois Pearson from music, oh, I miss Lois. It was this weird thing where CBC Kids was kind of like the island of misfit toys. We all needed kids programming. And there were a lot of women in the industry. Well, we'll just put them there because women understand kids. And as long as they get the numbers, it's fine. And a lot of the women on the show were like, OK, we'll play along with that narrative, secretly having the time of their life <laughs> and, and being the ones that created content that spanned over five generations and impacted yeah. our entire country. So like, kudos to them for playing the smart long game <laughs> instead of like anything else. Well, listen. So many fascinating discoveries in the doc, for example, that Ernie Coombs and Fred Rogers were friends. Did you know that? Um, so tell us, Rob, what you can tell us about their connection and also, uh, and quickly, how it impacted the show. Well, you know, Fred chose Ernie to come up to Canada when Fred had the opportunity to start his show here. It was the first time he was going to be on camera, which he was not comfortable with. And he chose Ernie to be the guy at his side that, I'm going to be on camera, I want you to come with me. And they shared a, same, a similar philosophy about what it meant to treat kids as people and how to use television as an educational device. Because up until that point, kids TV was just pie in the face and they wanted to do more. So cool. Just the scratching the surface. Uh, congratulations, thank both you. of you. And thank you both for being here. Thank you so, so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Uh, okay, Mr. Dress Up, The Magic of Make Believe. Make Believe, it is out today on Prime. So make sure you tune in and check that out. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back right after this. <laughs> Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.